we begin our tests, welcome back everybody. Thank you, Ahmed, for hosting us. And before we start, let's go through the basic parts of what you need to do to make sure that you get a high score. And so, the first thing is always about proper paragraph structure. You need a topic sentence, three main ideas. Each main idea should have details and examples, e.g. means example. You also need to join all of these details together with your connective words. For example, your discourse markers, first, second, third, first, second, third, in conclusion, linking words, first, lee, second, lee, also, furthermore, on the other hand, moreover. And then at the bottom there, we've got conjunctions, which will give you your grammar score, keywords, that, whose, which, why, when, where, who, since, during, before, after, and um, coordinating conjunctions, for and nor, but, or, yet, so. Use these words as much as you can. They make your sentences longer and longer. If you are only needing to get a 6 or a 6.5 or a 7, you don't even need to worry about making mistakes too often. Just worry about saying them as often as you can. If you're trying to get 8, now you should be paying attention to making sure you're getting it right every time. Next. Modal verbs, another big scoring opportunity for you. Should, would, could, might, ought, may, can, and the negatives, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, mightn't, ought not to, might not, and could not for the past tense, remember. And we've got some grammar patterns. Past and perfect plus the, or past, present plus the future tense, have, had, and has, plus continuous, the verb, plus ing. Also put an if at the beginning. If I had studied harder last time, I wouldn't need to take the test again. Something like this. And so the more that you show these things, the more that you do it, the higher your score goes. This helps to get you up to that band six, band seven, band six and a half-ish. After this, it's about your accuracy and the range of these things that you use. The fewer mistakes and the more variety, this pushes you into the eight. And so with that, should I give you an example? I'm going to tell you about um, a building I once saw. First, I'll tell you where this building is. This building is in Edmonton, Canada, and it is called the West Edmonton Mall. It is the biggest shopping center in Canada, but maybe 20 or 30 years ago, I think it was the biggest shopping center in the world. There is a hotel and a water park and a mini golf course and movie theaters and a pirate ship and lots and lots of interesting and fun things to do along with your shopping. The second thing I'll tell you is what this place looks like. It is a giant building. It is about four or five city blocks long. It has three to four floors. And depending on the area of the mall, it has a different look to it. For example, there are some glass pyramids over the pirate ship, and there's a giant glass dome over the water park. So it feels like you are at the beach when it's the middle of winter in Edmonton. And the next thing I can tell you about what it looks like is inside it is decorated wonderfully and there are bright colors and interesting art and displays. And the third thing I'll tell you about it is what people do there. So the first thing that people do obviously in a shopping mall is go shopping. They can shop for clothes and supplies for their house and furniture and they can get services like haircuts and get their nails done. And finally there's the entertainment. They can watch movies and go skating in the ice rink and go swimming in the water park. And so I've been telling you all about a building in my town that I've seen and I told you about what, it's, what it is, what it's like and what people do there. So, this is the example of a speaking answer question, or a speaking answer question, a speaking task answer for you. Follow the pattern, put in the linking words and the complex grammar. These things together give you your score. So, 
Who have we got first today, Ahmed? Okay, before this, we can uh, use this structure on the writing. Yes, the structure is the same for speaking and for writing. It is the structure of communication, of productive communication. Top okay. sentence, main ideas, details, and example. Main idea, details, and example. Main idea, details, and example. Closing sentence. That's the pattern for everything that you want to speak and everything that you want to write. Thanks for the question, my friend. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Dr. Salla? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi, Chris. How are you? Oh, let's see. Can you say that again, please? Sorry? Oh, there, that's better. I was having trouble hearing you before. Okay, and so this is the mock speaking test for the IELTS Support Canadian Mosaic English Language School training system. Um, the examiner is Chris Enders. Good evening. Can you tell me your full name, please? Yes, my name is Samar Medri And what can I call you? What can I call you? Chris? Yes, hello. There is a problem. There's a problem? There is an echo. Is it better now? Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing did it solve the problem? I'm trying. Is it better now? Hello? Okay. Yeah, am I clear? Testing, testing, one, two. Can you hear me, Ahmed? Yes, Chris, I'm hearing you. But there is an echo on the voice. Okay, okay, we will try again. We will try again. Okay. Okay. And so, we'll start over at the beginning. Okay. Dr. Samar, please. This is the... Okay, raise your voice, please. Raise your voice. Dr. Sauer, please raise your voice. This is the speaking mock test for the Canadian Mosaic IELTS support training system conducted on the 30th of September 2017 on Zoom. The examiner is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Samar Majdi Abujana, and you can call me Sam. And can you tell me where you're from, Sam? Yeah, I'm from Palestine, but nowadays I'm living in Egypt. And in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. And so, are you a student or are you a worker? Actually, I'm a worker and I'm a doctor. I'm working in a special clinic, which is specialized in obstetrics and gynecology. And do you like what you do? Yeah, I enjoyed my work very much because I chose this uh, for myself and uh, I was uh, want to do this since I was 16 and it's my desire. And would you recommend your job to other people? Uh, actually, it depends on the person itself. So, if you are uh, like to uh, help people and do extra work without taking some, uh, without taking a lot of things, and if you are to uh, to to take a lot of night shift, uh, um, so if you are liking this way of life, you can handle it. But if you are uh, that kind of people that you are not like to study or to spend a lot of time in hospital, no, I am not recommended, of course. Okay, let's move on to talk about hobbies. Do you have any hobbies? 
Yeah, actually, I like uh, to play piano. I'm very good at this. Uh, so it's one of my favorite things that I'm doing during my leisure time. Hmm. And what can we learn from having hobbies? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? I, didn't, I can't hear you. What can we learn from having hobbies? Okay, during our lives, we have a lot of duties, so sometimes we need to do something that is not usual and something that we really like. So doing hobbies, for me, relieves my stress, relieves uh, the, the uh, hard of the time that uh, I'm working, so it's make me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Is it important for children to have hobbies? I, I can't hear you. Please, again. Is it important for children to have hobbies? Uh, of course. I think children, especially when they are young, they have to do something that uh, make uh, themselves play and, uh, and uh, use their brain more and uh, also to have, uh, to have uh, their uh, way to, life, to live. So uh, hobbies will, of course, develop their, uh, their brain and how they how they handle with the situation that they thank you thinking. now in this next part i'm going to give you a question and you should speak about it for a full two minutes before you talk you have one minute to make a plan so the question is the first posted question today describe an open air or street market which you enjoyed visiting you should say where the market is what the market sells, how big the market is, and explain why you enjoy visiting this market. Can you begin planning now, please? All right, so remember, you've got two minutes for this. So can you begin speaking now, please? Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about a market which name is Capital Mall Market. Capital Mall Market is one of the biggest markets located in Gaza Strip, especially in Gaza City, in the town center. Um, a capital mall is a very essential mall in my city and all of people approximately are going to spend most of their time in it. Uh, the specific, the special about this market is that it uh, sells a lot of things and it's, uh, for example, uh, you can find a lot of kinds of food uh, in it, uh, in any, any, any kind of food like seafood or, uh, or food for your uh, daily use. Also, there is a big garden in, uh, in front of it to, for children to play uh, when their parents are going to do uh, uh, their shopping uh, inside the market. Uh, in addition to this, uh, you can find anything related to, to clothes, for example, in any age. Uh, also, there are there's different branch in school, for school stuff. Uh, and uh, for uh, your uh, special use, uh, the market is a uh, very uh, huge market. It's the biggest, as I said before. Uh, it's, um, it's located in an area approximately, uh, we can say it's 200 uh, kilometers, uh, 200, uh, uh, 200 square. Uh, and it has a lot of uh, door and it's really very, uh, very uh, huge one. Uh, I really enjoyed it because uh, its location is near to my university, so I sometimes go after my uh, my uh, after my uh, after my class. 
and I spent in that uh, most of the time in the cafe that which means is Rispa and it's very nice cafe. Uh, also, I buy from it my stuff uh, for the university, like lab coats and. Uh, Thank you very much. So, so we have so we've been talking about a place that you know, and I'd like to continue discussing this. And so in this first part, um, let's discuss the beauty of buildings. Is it important for a building to look beautiful, or is it just important that it is functional? Chris, please, you can ask him. Hello, Ahmed. Please. Chris, please, if you can ask me, Dr. Summer to raise your voice, please. So a lot of members asking about this. Are you hearing me, Chris, uh, clearly? I can hear you, yes. <laughs> but the other can. Okay. So, can we, let's try to speak louder or move closer to the microphone then. Okay. Um, uh, I think it depends. I think it depends on the person itself. But for me, I think if it's fun, uh, functional and uh, beautiful, uh, both the uh, two factors are very important because uh, you you can live in something functional, but at the same time, if it's not beautiful, you won't have uh, that spirit to live in it. So I think the both factor should uh, be in any building you will. All right, and would you say that buildings today are better than buildings in the past? Yeah, definitely I can say this because in the past you can find buildings from wood and some bad concrete and something that is not uh, really applicable for life. But nowadays we have a lot of really very good, very good uh, building stuff that uh, make the building more beautiful and more stronger. And there is a lot of designs. Uh, so I think in the few, uh, I think in the present it's much more better than the past. All right, thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. So, <clears throat> according to our public band descriptors, um, the first category is fluency and coherence. And so, this is how nicely and logically things are put together. Once we have our ideas, we need to put them together. And so, your ideas, Sam, are very good and very clear and you presented them well, but I didn't hear many of these. It was just one idea and an explanation, and another idea and the an explanation, and another idea and the explanation. And so you did part one very well, but part two, at least the top part, was not so great. I didn't hear a lot of the transition signals and the linking words, and so this pulls your score back down again. So if you look at the band descriptors, what I'm talking about is uses a range of connectives and discourse markers, but not always appropriately. Um, so yeah, seven says uses a range of connectives and discourse markers with some flexibility. So you're not getting here with those yet. So you're going to end up with a six for this. But the rest of it is all sevens. Your lexical resource actually was very good. It, you might even be up to an eight for that one. You, you were able to explain a lot of different things from general details to specific points and descriptions about it, and so it was very nice. The grammatical range and accuracy all also, it was good. I heard these, I heard some of these, and it was all right. You, in about a seven there. And then pronunciation. Pronunciation, your sound is clear when you're speaking, but there's some uhs and some uh, uh, and, uh, uh, when you're talking between your words, and so this lowers that clarity for your pronunciation. And so I would say that this was probably a, Six seven seven seven, which would leave you with a six point five. 
Um, what you need to work on is planning objectives and putting them into your paragraph structure, which again you did very well, and then just training yourself to speak more and more so you can get rid of those uh, uh, uh's and mm -hmm's and uh, your speech starts to flow like that river instead of having the starts and stops. But overall it was a strong performance. It's a very, very strong 6.5. Very close to can 7. I ask, can I ask you just one question please? Go ahead. Okay, my exam is after a month, and I need seven. Um, I need seven uh, at least. So, um, if I train myself every day during this month, can I reach seven? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Make sure that you train yourself with the practice test questions. Use part two questions from the Cambridge books. Yeah, I have. And, I have these books. Yeah, good. Thank Just you. train yourself like you're in the army, over and over again. Okay, great. <laughs> Nice test. Who's the next one? Okay. It's um, Mrs. Passant. You can go on now. Uh, How is our sound, Ahmed? Is our sound okay? Yes, of course. It's okay, Chris. It's okay now? Better than you are. Okay. So, hello, are we ready? Who's our candidate? Speak up, please. Ms. Passat. Are you there? Say hello if you're there and you're ready okay. to start the test. Okay, it's Ms. Safa, please. Hello. Who's ready to take the test with us? Say hi. Ms. Safa, please. Don't forget to turn your microphone on. There's some trouble. Oh, it'll be the next one. Yeah, let's go on to the next candidate. Who have we got, Ahmed? Okay, okay, Mr. Muhammad, go on. Muhammad, Muhammad Ad. Hello. Hello. So this is the IELTS support um, Canadian Mosaic English Language School training system mock speaking test. Uh, the candidate is Mohammed, and the examiner, the examiner, the examiner is Chris Enders. Good evening. My name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Mohammed Adil, and you can call me Mohammed. And can you tell me where you're from, Mohammed? I'm from Egypt, uh, but uh, to be definite, okay, I'm from uh, 6th of October. And so in this first part, let's talk about where you live. Do you live in an apartment or do you live in a house? Because of many features. Uh, can I explain that? Um, what do you like most about where you live? Actually, uh, I like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you say it again, please? Because I confused. What do you like most about where you live? Okay, uh, actually, uh, I like my spacious uh, rooms, uh, okay. Uh, also, uh, I love um, the cheerful colors of my uh, flat. Um, uh, also, I, I love the weather there. I, I mean that uh, it's, uh, it's warm in winter and it's also um, uh, cool in summer. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's important to, uh, to think about uh, the weather when you uh, choose a flat. Let's go on to talk about the weather. Um, okay. What is the weather like where you live? In summer, I think it's uh, it's pleasing uh, uh, windy. It's okay. It's, uh, I think it's a, it's it's nice. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. it, it's mild in in, uh, in summer, uh, and also it's warm in winter. Okay, it's, uh, it's not chilly uh, like uh, many places here in Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is one uh, unique feature. Is it better to live in a hot climate or to live in a cold climate? Uh, okay, I'll talk about myself. Okay, uh, I think it's uh, it depends on mood. Sometimes uh, you want really to live in, uh, in hot weather. Uh, for example, uh, when you go to uh, uh, summer vacation, you know uh, beaches and something like that. Okay, so so you you really need uh, sunshine and, and this hot weather. Uh, now, also, I'm going to give you a question and I'd like you to talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to make a plan. Can you begin plan? Oh, sorry, I should tell you what the question is first, shouldn't I? Describe something you did that was new or exciting. You should say what you did, where and when you did it, who you shared this activity with, and explain why this activity was new and exciting for you. Begin planning now, please. All right, so can you begin speaking now, please? Okay, um, I'm going to talk about uh, my IELTS experience. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's one of the most uh, enticing experience in my life. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, firstly, uh, it's really a beneficial experience, okay? As um, I think it's, it's it's important and crucial, okay, to to be able to communicate with all over the people uh, with, with people uh, in, uh, in all all over the world. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, actually, I began this uh, journey because really I, I I consider it as a journey. Okay. I began it in um, uh, three months ago. Uh, actually, uh, I began to study uh, through uh, the uh, internet, okay? and after that, uh, I went to uh, a center, language center, okay? Um, I think it's, uh, it's amazing and spectacular as uh, um, when you learn about a new language, you learn about a new culture, and you know about others' customs, and that's why I think uh, it's somehow raised my awareness, um, widened my horizons, and you know, I think that uh, this experience will benefit me, not only in, in my personal life, but also in my career. Actually, it's uh, usually demanded in, uh, for, uh, for our career, as I work as an engineer, electrical engineer, so it's, uh, it's really, um, let's say it, it's a grandest, it's one of the grandest uh, skills that the one shot had in, in, in my Thank career. You. So, uh, you're talking about something exciting that you did or something new that you did. So, let's continue talking about this. Um, <clears throat> why do we like to try new things? Okay, because uh, the life happens. Only once. So, uh, if you lived it uh, 
let's say in a nice way so uh, it would be then it would be enough okay so i think that uh, although the life is too short you deserve to to learn more about it okay and it's, uh, and so i think that there are no obstacles for for one okay what? Is it important for children to try to continue? Of course, because uh, the more they know, the better uh, cognitive skills they, they, will, they will have. And uh, the better, uh, let's say, strategies and techniques that they will be learned and taught, I'm sorry, they will be taught and learned uh, to be able to handle uh, crisis or whatever bad situation what about all old people should old people be learning new things i think it's 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 not uh, like like that okay it's not about all people learning all things okay i think that if you want to learn any new thing okay it's okay it's it's not uh, it's not something difficult or something hard However, uh, if you don't like that, don't do that. So uh, I mean that it's not a mandatory, or it's uh, it's not mandatory, or it's not a, an essential thing for for all people to do. But uh, this is my standpoint. This is my opinion in this point. All right. Thank you very much. This is the end of your speaking test. Mohammed, you are an interesting case. You have quite good grammar. Your vocabulary is wide, you make some mistakes with it, but for like your grammar score and things, you're sounding like at least a six, possibly even up to a seven. But it takes you a very long time to say things, which brings your score back down again. And so for that grammar, for the grammar, I'd almost give you a seven for it. For the vocabulary, you, for your rate, you definitely have a seven, but you make enough mistakes with like the form of the word using an adjective instead of a verb or something like this to bring it down to six again. And then you've got your fluency, which is just, there's a long pause between each word and so that really drags that score down. And so I would say, Mohammed, you've got, oh, a six, six to 6.5. But if you can get your fluency up, that score is going to go, it's going to improve a lot in a very short amount of time. You've got the pieces that you need. You need to practice getting them together quickly and efficiently. And so, just like with Sam in the last test, your key to go forwards is training yourself in part two questions so that you can get that speech flowing like a river instead of uh, 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 like this. So you've got what it takes, now you need to be able to do it faster, Mohammed. Good, good, uh, good test though. Keep going, you, so. keep practicing. Okay. Okay, Chris. Please, I want to say something uh, before we uh, continue. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, please, members, it's the list of the participants. Okay, it's uh, Ms. Safa and second Ms. Passant and then Mr. Peter. Okay. And I want I want to say something again. A lot of members asking me about how I can join and how I can join this, this session. Please, all of this on the post. Please have a have another revision on the post. Okay, Ms. Safa, please go on. Yes. Hello. Hello, are you ready? Yes, hello. Yes, I am ready. Hello, Chris, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Let's begin. Thank you for you. This okay. is the IELTS support.
Canadian Mosaic English Language School mock testing system conducted on the 30th of September 2017 on Zoom. The candidate is Safa and the examiner is Chris. Good evening. My name is Chris Enders. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Safa Sifen. And what can I call you? Safa. And can you tell me where you're from, Safa? I am from Egypt, from Aswan Governorate. And in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. And so let's talk about where you live. Do you live in a house or do you live in an apartment? No, I am living now in an apartment. And what do you like most about your apartment? Uh, I like the most of my apartment, uh, the division of my apartment. For example? For example, that uh, the reception is uh, in, a, in, a, in a part and the bedrooms in another part of the flat. So you have some speciality. Hmm. If you could change one thing about your apartment, what would you change? Uh, it's only uh, I'd like to change it to have um, uh, just uh, even a small garden and small pool. And in so a place, in a place in which I have, uh, I, I could have uh, a uh, like a small garden and uh, and pool or even a garden. Sure. Let's go on to talk about animals. Do you like animals? Not too much. Why not? I am afraid of some animals and I feel disgusting from others. Hmm. Um, are pets good for children? For my kids, uh, they admire cats and for my elder son, he likes to have a cat. Uh, but I found it's very hard in my flat to have a cat or uh, in general to have a pit because it needs uh, uh, some open uh, place. Hmm. Is it common for people to have pets where you live? Yes, it's very common uh, for the people here uh, where I live to have uh, a lot of pets like uh, dogs, cats, uh, birds and some of uh, people here um, they can have some uh, wild animals like tigers, oh, wow. horses, yeah. I am living now in Gulf, in a country of the Gulf, uh, Gulf area. So you, you'll find the citizen, citizens here, they have a lot of different animals like tiger. Hmm. So yeah, now, at their homes. I'm going to give you a question and I'd like you to talk about it for two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to make a plan. So, your question is the third posted question today. Describe a journey, for example, by car, or plane, or boat that you took. You should say where you went, how you traveled, why you went on the journey, and explain why you remember it. Can you begin planning now, please? Yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So remember, you should speak for a full two minutes. And can you begin speaking now, please? Um, 
uh, firstly, I want to start to tell you about uh, the spectacular uh, journey I, I've ever been. Uh, it was to um, it was to Thailand. Uh, th it, it, I've been visited. Uh, sorry, I've visited uh, Thailand maybe around uh, seven ye uh, years ago. Uh, it was my honeymoon. Uh, I uh, traveled. Uh, I traveled by um, by airplane. Um, I want I, I want to the, uh, I want on this journey because of uh, uh, because of um, because it was our honeymoon in first stage, but uh, uh, also because I don't have uh, my own flat in Egypt, so uh, and also I don't have my settlement here in the Gulf, so I have I stayed already like one week in Egypt in my parents' home. Uh, then I traveled directly to uh, Thailand for like 12, ye 12 days. Uh, within this time, I, uh, I had my settlement here, so I came here directly. Uh, if I want to, uh, uh, to talk about this journey, it was, um, uh, it was amazing. It was uh, uh, really, it was um, uh, imaginative. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that I, I'll go to this country and first stage and also I can't forget uh, anything around uh, about this journey. Uh, I can remember every aspect. I can remember uh, what is my feeling uh, was uh, when I I uh, I get in the airplane uh, and spend like uh, like maybe five or six hours uh, within the plane and at the time. So. We've been talking about a journey you took, and I'd like to continue talking about traveling. And so let's consider, first of all, ways of travel. Um, what are the most comfortable ways of going on a long trip these days? For sure, uh, these days, if you, if you want to feel comfortable, you'll use the uh, airplane, for sure. But not all airplanes uh, lines. Because <laughs> these days um, we are uh, we hear that uh, we hear that uh, a lot of people they get disturbed in some airplane lines. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want to travel, you have to choose the very good quality um, lines, mm -hmm. like uh, Qatar Airways, like uh, British lines, uh, also Turkish lines. But uh, I'll not, I not mention for sure the, bad, the, the, the worst uh, airlines, but uh, you have to, if you, if you want to feel comfortable in your, uh, uh, in your journey, uh, you have to choose the, the line, mm -hmm. the airline first. Why is it sometimes nice to travel long distance by car? Um, I don't like uh, traveling by car f too much. I, uh, as I have something in my uh, inner ears, I feel dizziness from cars. Uh, so I, if I don't, if I don't uh, want to feel dizziness, I have to be the driver. So <laughs> if um, to concentrate on the road, so I forget my uh, my dizziness feel. But I think in in Egypt, if you want to uh, to travel to like Hurghada or or Sharm el Sheikh. You have to talk uh, to take um, to take car. Uh, if you if you have some stops stops in the in the way like uh, stations or 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 things like this, or uh, if you have uh, uh, a company like uh, your family, your friends, Thank it will be very good. Very much. That's the end of your. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. What do we have here? Safa. So, <clears throat> what I noticed here, and what hopefully other people who are watching noticed, so if you come and you listen to these mock tests every week, you should be getting to learn what a seven sounds like, what a six sounds like, what a five sounds like. Are you starting to be able to understand this difference? Ahmed must be able to understand the difference by now since you're here every, every time with me. But, and so, Safa, 
your speaking, again, like Muhammad that came before you, you've got a pretty good vocabulary. You make some mistakes with it, but you know the words that you want to say, and you said some pretty specific words, like your inner ear problem. Um, however, your speaking was slow, and during the part two task especially, you were very repetitive. You said the same things like three or four times. Um, for example, um, when you were saying what you remembered about your trip, you just kept saying, I remembered it very well. It was something that I will always remember. The memory is very strong. But you never actually got into the memories and discussed what the memories were or described them in any way. You just kind of repeated that the memories were good in several different grammar patterns. Um, and some pausing as well. And so for your score, you look, you sound like band five for fluency and coherence. Usually maintains the flow of speech, but uses repetition and self-correction and slow speech to keep going. And so on that part two, this is really what you sounded like, Safa. Um, then for your lexical resource, for your vocabulary, it was six. You said the words that you wanted to say, but you made conjugation mistakes and things when you said them. Grammar? Grammar, I'm torn. You use a lot of simple sentences while you're speaking. You use the complex ones too, but you often rely on simple sentences where you could be joining them together and making longer complex ones. And so this for your grammar and accuracy, it's a six. Uses mix of simple and complex structures, but with limited flexibility. Makes frequent mistakes with complex structures. Yeah. And so that's where you are. You're better than a five for that, which says uses a limited range of more complex structures, but they usually contain errors. You did more than a limited range, but you just use too many simple sentences all the time. And so you're looking like about a 5.5 Safa. Okay, um, thank you, Chris. Practice will help you. Getting used to speaking for that two minutes will help you more and more. Again, yeah. nobody speaks for two minutes at a time without stopping, not even in our, lang our native languages, unless you're a teacher like me or you're a politician. It's the only time or the only people that speak for two minutes. And so it's difficult and you need to practice. Thank you. We are learning. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Who's up next, Ahmed? Please, ma'am, if you have a minute, please, Ms. Ms. Hassan, okay? If any members have any question, please write it in a note. And by the end of the session, you can ask Mr. Mr. Chris, okay? Write it in a note. Not on the chat, please, in a note, okay? And by the end of the session, you can ask Mr. Chris, okay? Ms. Passant, to go on now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Are you ready? I'm ready. Excellent. So, welcome to the mock speaking test for the IELTS Support Canadian Mosaic English Language School Training System. The candidate is Basant and the examiner is Chris. Welcome. Can you tell me your full name, please? Basant Nabil. And can you tell me where you're from, Basant? I'm from Egypt, specifically from Al Ma'adi. And in this first part, let's talk about what you do. Are you a student or are you a worker? I am working now as a pharmacist. And what is the most difficult thing about your job? Uh, I'm sorry, what? What is the most difficult thing about your job? Uh, people I'm dealing with, they uh, sometimes become uh, tough. They uh, always ask me something about uh, their medicines they took last year, or uh, the pink uh, or red uh, color tablet. 
something like that. Mm -hmm. um, did you need to study for a long time before you got your job? Uh, five years in college is a very long time for me. And after that, I got uh, a one-year training. Then I worked as a pharmacist, a community pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to talk about the seasons. Um, how many seasons are there where you live? Season like uh, the climate, winter mm -hmm. or something. Uh, I'm in the Gulf now in Saudi Arabia, so it, uh, I can say there are only two seasons. Hot and uh, summer and spring. No winter, no, uh, no uh, winter. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite season? Uh, I love the winter. Why? Uh, the climate is uh, very uh, sufficient to me. Uh, if I am cold, I can put on some clothes. But in hot uh, weather, it's uh, sometimes above 40. So you can't... Uh, you can't deal with it. It's unbearable uh, climate. Mm. Um, is the weather different today than it was 10 years ago? I think it has uh, changed dramatically. They, uh, it's uh, more because of the global warming and something like that. It's become hotter in the summers and become uh, colder in winter. So. Uh, yeah, I think it is a change. So now I'm going to give you a topic. And I'd like you to talk about it for a full two minutes. Before you talk, you should take one minute to make a plan. So your question okay. is the fourth posted question today. Describe a person who has done a lot of work to help people. You should say who this person is or was, where this person lives or lived, what he or she has done to help people and explain how you know about them. Can you begin planning now, please? Okay. All right, so remember, you should speak for a full two minutes. Can you begin speaking now? Okay. Uh, the person I'm going to talk about uh, today is uh, Ayman. He is uh, my manager on uh, Life Makers uh, for Charity Deeds. We are working together in Insane Project. Uh, it's mainly about uh, going and excavate uh, some villages and uh, help the deprived people in it. The, the literature children, they uh, help them by uh, providing them a, a project. They can uh, be the breadwinner, the, uh, the breadwinner for the family. They uh, force uh, their children to exit the school uh, to uh, work and uh, be a breadwinner for the, their family and uh, help in uh, bringing money in. They are mainly scraping a living out of it. So uh, in this charity, we uh, do uh, bring them back to their uh, school or college or whatever and uh, provide them with uh, a project so it can bring them uh, a money they can uh, depend on, on their living. So... Uh, mm, that's all I have, really. Um, 
Is it important to help other people? Important what? Is it important to help other people? Of course it is. If you uh, make the smile on their faces, they uh, pray for you if you help them. You see the community or the country you are living in uh, improving in the learning and education. You try to uh, remove the poverty and famine in the country. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, what are some, um, let's continue talking about helping people. So, what are some international ways that people help? For example, some disasters or some crisis where one country would help another country. I didn't get uh, that question, I'm sorry. Sure. Let's talk about countries helping each other. And so what are some situations where one country would aid or send help to another country? When a country suffer from a famine like uh, Somalian uh, people or a hurricane hit the country, uh, all the infrastructure of the country are uh, damaged. So, so other countries try to help them and uh, provide them any kind of help, financial help, I'm sorry, uh, medicinal help, or uh, any kind of help would be uh, appreciated. Mm -hmm. And what about on the local level? What are some types of organizations that help people where you live? Uh, where I live, uh, Life Maker uh, Charity and uh, Risala for Charity Deeds, uh, they do uh, help uh, people a lot. Mm -hmm. Provide, providing, like I said before, projects or uh, financial aids. Learning. Uh, okay. What are some ways that we can teach children the importance of helping others? You can take them by their hand and uh, let them see you as a, an idol or example. Uh, so uh, when you give uh, a poor people or uh, deprived uh, people uh, money or something like that, they uh, see you as an example. So they will follow your steps. Mm. Um, and so <clears throat> are people as helpful today as they were in the past? From my perspective, uh, yes, they, uh, in the past they were uh, very, uh, I don't know the word, they were very helpful. Uh, they uh, help each other without even asking, you know, in a village or something like that, everyone know uh, the others. So uh, in the secret, they uh, help him by providing uh, uh, money or providing uh, any kind of uh, food or something. So, yeah, they were uh, a lot helpful than today. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned in the village or in the countryside. Does this mean that people who live in the cities are less willing to be helpful than people who live in the countryside? It depends, but uh, mainly because it's difficult to uh, locate uh, the people in need. You, you may see a different kind of people asking for help, but uh, in fact, they are very rich. Uh, I know someone who was asking for help uh, and uh, giving his hands out, and uh, we found that uh, he owned a, a five-story building in his uh, countryside. So it's uh, deceiving. All right. Thank you very much. That's the end of your speaking test. Thank you. Okay, so what did we hear today, or what did we hear with this interview? Um, I heard, I think I heard about a band 6 to a 6.5. First fluency and coherence. We'll start at a band 6 and see if it makes sense. You're willing to speak at length, though you may lose coherence at times due to occasional repetition.
saying the same thing over again a couple of times in different ways. Self-correction, you say something and then you go back and fix it because you realize you made a mistake. Or also hesitation, uh, 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 or some pauses between things. So a seven is speaks at length without noticeable effort. And so was the speaking like a river, fluid and easy? I'm not sure. It sounded, it took you some effort. You had to think about what you were saying. So it, that's a six for fluency and coherence. Lexical resource, your vocabulary score. You, again, you used some good words. There were a couple of times where you couldn't say what you wanted to say, but you were able to paraphrase and say it again, or say it and reestablish your communication. The question is, was it a seven? Uses your vocabulary resource flexibly to discuss a variety of topics? I'm not sure it was so flexible. Uses less common and idiomatic vocabulary? Yeah, I did hear that. Some awareness of style? Mm hmm You know what, it's a six. Generally paraphrases successfully the straight out of the band six description. A wide enough vocabulary to discuss topics at length, yes, and make meaning clear, yes, in spite of inappropriacies, yes. And so it's a six. Grammar and accuracy. We'll start at band seven. Uses a range of complex structures with some flexibility. And I did hear a range of structures, and you did get often get sentences right. But then for the next point for band seven, frequently produces error-free sentences. And so this is what it comes down to. Were you frequently producing error-free sentences? And so this is meaning <laughs> you're better than 70% accuracy here. And so I'm not sure that you were there. So it's a six again. And then pronunciation. There was some, I've got noted down here, there were some ums and some ahs at the beginning, but by the end you had worked them out. Um, yeah, I'm torn between a six and a seven on that. And so what you've got here is a six to a 6.5 for this exam. Um, what you need to do is again just practice more. Everybody here today that we examined, they all had the words that they needed. They just didn't use them well enough to get past that band seven. Um, everybody had the grammar that they should use. They knew what they should do, but they didn't have that flowing of a river that gets you up into that band seven and band eight where it's nice to listen to and you don't have to focus really hard on understanding what's being said. And so we didn't get that high today, but we've got people that have good potential to be that high in a, a month or so from now if they continue to practice those part two questions over and over and over again and follow the structure, how to connect those ideas together, and then a range of grammar. This is the recipe, or this is the plan. And so practice makes perfect. And so we've probably got a, got a little bit of time left for a few questions, my friend. So what do you think, Ahmed? Are we going to answer some questions? Okay, we can take. We'll take yes, we questions. can take a question. Sure. Yep. So, who's first about questions? Ms. Safa. Uh, thank you. Thank you for you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, and thanks, uh, Chris, for your efforts. Just, I, I'd like to ask about my pronunciation. I, um, I finished my uh, test today with you. And you give me band 5.5 5 like this. It's just I, I'd like to ask about my pronunciation. May I need to uh, also to practice, uh, to renew, to change? Or it's okay. It's a quite good. 
So this is the thing about pronunciation, Safa. There are two measurements for pronunciation. The first measurement is about the sound of your words and how clearly you say your words. This you have no problem with. The words that you say, you say them clearly. The sounds that you make, you make those sounds well. The problem with the pronunciation is the second measurement. This first measurement gets you to about a band five. The second measurement is not about the sounds of the words, it's about your pronunciation across the whole sentence. And so if you can't get to the end of the sentence without some stops and some starts and some ahs and some ums and some uhs, then this is affecting that pronunciation score about getting the sentence out and understanding your pronunciation across that whole idea. And so that's what affected your score, not the sound of your words. And so again, to get over this stuff, what you need to do is just practice. Think about a okay. water in a water tap. It hasn't been used for a very long time or it hasn't been used much at all. And so when you turn the tap, it's difficult to turn it and the water only comes drip, drip, drip. Mm -hmm. But day by day, if you exercise that tap, the water starts to come more smoothly and starts to flow freely. And it's yeah. the same idea with you, all of you today that took the test. It's that same okay. metaphor. Thank you. Thanks for the last. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. 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 Alda? You can ask Mr. Chris. Hi. Hello, hi. What would you like to know? Uh, uh, can you hear me? Can yes, hear me? very well. Okay, thank you. Um, all I just want to know that um, uh, the speaking tests uh, sometimes uh, got tricky and sometimes they may ask us uh, about uh, something uh, that we uh, really um, is sophisticated so we have to explain um, much words sometimes i uh, i'm out of ideas so uh, and i start to stuttering so <laughs> what's the solution for this problem normally so <clears throat> and i uh, sorry uh, uh, sorry for interrupting you and i have a, another question shall i pause it now or shall i later well let's deal with this one first okay here you go so, about the answers the, ask, the questions on the test should not be difficult questions. Um, the test is designed so that any person from anywhere in the world, from any level of society or any culture, should be able to answer the questions on the test. For example, I, when I was an examiner, I gave the test to children, seven, eight, nine, ten years old sometimes. They wanted to go to a private English school, and so they had to take the test to get an English score to enter the school. And so they could answer the test, even the seven-year-olds. What is the problem usually is people are nervous, and so they can't think of answers, or they, their brain freezes up, and they can't produce any ideas. And so this is, again, is about practice and getting comfortable doing this. And so you repeat the steps. You get all of the Cambridge books, and you do test after test after test, and you get comfortable and relaxed while doing it. And then you also get better and faster at doing the plan. And because you are getting this into your mind, in the back of your mind, you get, it starts to become easier to produce these ideas. So it's again, just a matter of training. Um, well, there is, sorry, I should continue this. If you've got a very high band on the part three of the speaking test, if the examiner thinks that you're above band seven for your speaking, there is a set of questions where they are more challenging questions to test you at that band eight level to see if you've got that very fine vocabulary, if you can discuss the tiniest points, or you can talk about the biggest philosophies and ideas and things. But most people will never hear those questions. It's only when the examiner is expecting that you could possibly be a 7.5 to an 8 that they will turn to those more difficult questions. 
Other than that, they should be questions that anyone can answer. Okay, I see. Thank you so much. My can pleasure. I my next can I pose another question? Sure. Okay, regarding the writing test, uh, we, we're, we're supposed to make the task two. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have my uh, exam uh, after f uh, 14 days, actually, and it's a general training. So, uh, task two for the general training uh, sometimes also needs, um, uh, not needs, it's, it's actually uh, harder than the first task. So, Shall I be uh, so? Uh, I'm supposed to write uh, sophisticated lexical words and uh, and uh, good format for for it, or shall I use the simple sentences with a good grammar and a good a good uh, de detection? If, you, if I say, and it, it will work. Okay. Or, or no. How it, how it's going? If I if you got my idea, I don't know. Yeah, I get your idea. This is an excellent question. Um, there is, on the band descriptors, between band 5 and band 6, there's a line. Band 5 means very nice, simple grammar. Band 6 means very bad, complex grammar. So, if you only use simple grammar, no matter if it's perfect, you will not score above band 5 or band 5.5. You'll, it will never ever happen because you're not doing anything on the higher levels. You have to perform the trick or you have to perform the skill before you can get a score for it. And so if you don't do it, you get no opportunity to get the score. If you want those higher bands, band six, seven, eight, nine, you need to be doing the range of things. It says right on the band of scriptures, a range of vocabulary, a range of grammar, a combination of things. And so this is how you get it. If you're looking for a 6 or a 6.5, it's these. All you need to do is roll them out as much as possible. You don't even need to worry about not making mistakes because that band 6 means you tried it, but you didn't do it very well. Band 7 means you're starting to get better, you've got some control, you're at 65-70% accuracy. And then band 8, you're not making many mistakes anymore. Very few mistakes. But if you only do simple things, you're stuck at band 5. It's a good question, because there's a lot of advice that says don't speak much and then you won't make many mistakes. Don't write much and then you won't make many mistakes. This is exactly the opposite of the good advice. Thank you so much, and uh, it's much—it's uh, very helpful and very supportive. Thank you, Dr. Well, I'm glad that you find it useful. Okay, one more question, Ahmed, and then I've got to go get ready for my next lesson. Okay. Who wants to ask? Sorry, if you have an, if you have a question, you can tell Mr. Chris. Five, four, three, one. <laughs> okay. Well, if there are no more questions, um, thank you very much for watching us today and for the brave people who agreed to take the test with us. We hope that you learned a lot. Thank you, Ahmed, for being our gracious host again. Thanks, Chris. And if you can, if you can please let me with them to say something. So. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm going to bid you all farewell until next time. Happy training.